Well, there's been some crazy news happening over the last 24 hours, most of them surrounding OpenAI and the new thing that they're about to unveil. So first of all, there's a lot of speculation as to what the new release will be. OpenAI is saying that they will have a live stream on OpenAI.com at 10 a.m. Pacific Monday to demo some updates. Sam Altman clarifies it's not GPT-5. It's not a search engine. There were a number of things pointing to potentially there being a search engine, and we do believe that one is in the works, but this isn't it. And Sam Altman's saying it's, it feels like magic to him, whatever this new thing is. There are some unconfirmed leaks that there's some code that references GPT-4 auto. What could auto mean? Could it be agentic capabilities, AI agents? I'm guessing that the new breakthroughs have to do with voice but more specifically with voice agents. OpenAI develops AI voice assistant as it chases Google and Apple. Now you might think this was from a while ago because we already had kind of voice assistants in GPT-4, but this is May 10th, just a few days before the new announcement. We'll come back to this in a second, but the point is this. Since a number of people have mentioned that agents will be a potential focus at this streaming live event, but getting back to this, OpenAI develops AI voice assistants. Now, we know some people talked about seeing the next iteration of the GPT model, whether that's called a GPT-5 or something else. And they're saying it's going to include better reasoning. And they're saying this would be the next step in developing something like the virtual assistant in the movie Her. And these assistants would be able to act like a tutor for kids working on various papers or math problems, but also as automated customer service agents. And this sentence stands out to me as why potentially this could be an on-device model. So Microsoft could potentially use OpenAI's new AI to improve its own voice assistant or try to make it compact enough to run on small devices, including wearables with front-facing cameras that can capture the customer's surrounding. And just as I was about to wrap up the video, somebody posted this. This is potentially a leak of what's coming on Monday. Again, we don't know the source yet, but it sounds like this will be published through some credible source later today. They're saying they expect AI voice assistants with enhanced capabilities. Again, comparing it to the movie Her, the integration of audio and visual features in one model, unlike previous models, which treated audio transcription and text-to-speech as separate features, the new model integrates these capabilities. This integration allows the model to have a better understanding of both image and audio inputs, enhancing the overall speed and efficiency of the system. This will be rolling out on Monday. And initially, this new technology will, will be available via the cloud, targeting uses such as improving automated customer service. The technology is too large to run on personal devices yet, but could be integrated into devices via cloud computing in the near term. There's also mention of GPT-5, which is expected to be a significant improvement over GPT-4 and might be released by the end of the year. And also, we might be getting a new pricing tier that offers up to a 50% discount for customers who prepay, as well as the potential integration of Apple and the iPhone, which we covered earlier on this channel. Sam Altman just went on the All In podcast and helped answer some questions about AGI, the upcoming model releases, and just some basic thoughts about where this whole AI thing is going. Here are just a few quick clips that kind of stood out to me that I thought were interesting. Like we may release it in a different way than we've released previous models. Um, also, I don't even know if we'll call it GPT-5. Um, what, I, what I will say is, you know, a lot of people have noticed how much better GPT-4 has gotten um, since we've released it, and particularly over the last few months. I think... I think that's like a better hint of what the world looks like, where it's not the like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, but you you just you use an AI system and the whole system just gets better and better fairly continuously. Um, I think that's like both a better technological direction. I think that's like easier for society to adapt to. Um, but but I assume that's where we'll head. I will say that I I expect lots of very capable models in the world and you know like it feels to me like we just like stumbled on a new fact of nature or science or whatever you want to call it which is like we can create you can like i mean i, I don't believe this literally but it's like a spiritual point you know intelligence is just this emergent property of matter and that's like a that's like a rule of physics or something you mentioned sort of the models that can fit on a phone. So obviously, whether that's an LLM or some SLM or something, I'm sure you're thinking about that. But then does the device itself change? I mean, is it does it need to be as expensive as an iPhone? Uh, 
I'm super interested in this. Uh, I, I love like great new form factors of computing. And it feels like with every major technological advance, a new thing becomes possible. Uh, phones are unbelievably good. So I think the threshold is like very high here. Like what, mm-hmm. like I think, I think like I personally think an iPhone is like the greatest piece of technology humanity has ever made. It's really a wonderful product. And I think voice yeah. is a hint to whatever the next thing is. Like if mm-hmm. you can get voice interaction to be really good, good it feels i think that feels like a different way to use a computer i i think what i want is just this always on like super low friction thing where i can either by voice or by text or ideally like some other it just kind of knows what i want have this like constant thing helping me throughout my day that's got like as much context on as possible it's like the world's greatest assistant um and it's just this like thing working to make me better and better there's sort of two different approaches and they don't sound that different but i think they're like very different for how we'll design the system in practice there's the i want an extension of myself a ghost or an alter ego or this thing that really like is me is acting on my behalf and then there's this other thing which is like i want a great senior employee it may get to know me very well i may delegate it you know you can like have access to my email and i'll tell you the constraints but but i think of it as this like separate entity It's an agent in a way, like it's out there working on your behalf. I think there'd be agent-like behavior, but there's like a difference between a senior employee and an agent. Yeah. And and like I want it, you know, I think of like my, I think like of it, like one of the things that I like about a a senior employee is they'll, they'll push back on me. They will sometimes not do something I ask, or there sometimes will say like, I can do that thing if you want, but if I do it, here's what I think would happen. And then this, and then that, and are you really sure? Hmm. And I definitely want that kind of vibe, which not, not just like this thing that I reason. give a task and it blindly yeah. does. It can sure. reason. Yeah. Yeah. And push it back. It can reason. It has like the kind of relationship with me that I would expect out of a really competent person that I worked with, which is different from like a sycophant. It's a lot of hand wringing right now, Sam, about jobs. You had a lot of, I think you did like some sort of a test when you were at YC about UBI and you've been- Our public- results in that come out very soon. I uh, just, it was a five-year study that wrapped up. So we started thinking about this in 2016, about the same time started taking AI really seriously. And the theory was that the magnitude of the change that may come to society and jobs in the economy and sort of in some deeper sense than that, like what the social contract looks like, meant that we should have many studies to study many ideas about new new ways to arrange that. Um, I also think that, you know, I'm not like a super fan of how the government has handled most policies designed to help poor people. And I kind of believe that if you could just give people money, they would make good decisions and the market would do its thing. And, you know, I'm very much in favor of lifting up the floor and reducing, eliminating poverty, but I'm interested in better ways to do that. So 2016 was a very long time ago. Uh, you know, now that we see some of the ways that AI is developing, I wonder if there's better things to do than the traditional um, conceptualization of UBI. Uh, like, I wonder, I wonder if the future looks something like more like universal basic compute than universal basic income. And everybody gets like a slice of GPT-7's compute and they can use it, they can resell it, they can donate it to somebody to use for cancer research. But but what you get is not dollars, but this like productivity slice. Yeah, you own like part of the productivity. Right. People talk a lot about agents as if there's kind of this linear set of call functions that yeah. happen. But one of the things that arises in biology is networks of systems that have cross interactions that the aggregation of the system, the aggregation of the network produces an output rather than one thing calling another, that thing calling another. Do we see like an emergence in this architecture of either specialized models or network models that work together to address bigger problem sets, use reasoning? I don't know how much reasoning is going to turn out to be a super generalizable thing. I suspect it will, but that's more just like an intuition and a hope, and it would be nice if it worked out that way. You clearly will need specialized simulators, connectors, pieces of data, whatever. But my intuition, and again, I don't have this like backed up with science. My intuition would be if we can figure out the core of generalized reasoning, connecting that to new problem domains, in the same way that humans are generalized reasoners, 
would I think be be doable? It's like a fast um, unlock, faster unlock than I think. I I mm -hmm. think so. Mm -hmm. With that said, my name is Wes Roth, and thank you for watching.